Hi everyone, this is Gennady from Queen's Botanical Garden. How's everyone doing? Now today, I'd like to talk about some of the animals that visit our garden and make the garden their home. In fact, you probably have them living all around your neighborhood. Um, today, we are going to talk about animal architects. What do I mean by that? Hmm. Hmm. Can you think of an animal that might build something? What's that? You got it. Very good. Now, animals build all sorts of all sorts of uh, uh, structures. What does that mean? Some of them build structures to protect themselves, to shelter in when the weather is bad, or to raise their young. Some of them build structures that help them catch their food or store it. Some of them even build structures to attract mates. Today we're going to take a look at a couple of different structures and the reasons why animals are going to build them. And we're going to build our own models of them and actual real structures for animals to come and visit us in our homes. Now let's start with one kind of structure. Now I have here an example of a bird's nest. Now take a look at that. Now why do you think a bird might build a nest? Uh, and different birds build different nests. This one I'm holding looks like it's made out of dried grass and straw. There's some leaves in here and a lot of mud caked together. So the other day, I went to the garden to see if I can find some other nests to show you. And look what I found. Go. There are lots of animals that build homes in our trees, like this either bird or squirrel nest. Animals will use all sorts of surfaces and areas and natural materials to build their nests. For example, these logs will provide them both with a place to live and a source of food. Whoa, look at that worm. Look at that one. Yep, another one is trying to get away. I will put this log back to continue providing them shelter. Oftentimes, animals will look for protection from where they build their nests. So for example, these sharp thorns on these roses will protect the little nest. This little robin built a nest to raise and protect its young. Let's see if we can get a closer look. Hi, little robin. All right, welcome back. Now you saw that little robin's nest was all woven together and uh, had a nice cushion for those eggs. And what I'd like to do is I would like for you to have a chance to see what it's like to make a robin's nest. What you're going to need are the following things. A regular paper bag. Some sticks or twigs if you can find them. If not, that's okay. You can use paper towels, yarn, <clears throat> Whatever materials you might find at home that you think a bird might find um, outdoors. I even was lucky enough that one of my plants over here oh, there we go, was shedding leaves, so I took a few of those. Okay, so here's what we are going to do. You're going to take your bag and open it up. Okay, you want to go all around the top of it, scrunching, 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 
until the scrunched paper makes your bag into a little pocket. There we go, just like that. And look, we have the beginnings of a nest. Now it's your job to decorate it with the little pieces of leaves or uh, twigs that you might find in your neighborhood or in your home. Let's take a look. I'll put a picture of the finished one into the video. Now, if you want a real challenge, you know, I'm using both hands with my opposable thumbs. If you want to see what it's like for a bird to do it, try using chopsticks like a bird's beak. Let's see. Oh, no. How am I going to break it off? All right. So let's see what you can do with a bird's, with making a bird's nest. I'll put a picture of the one that I made. All right, so take a look. I've made a model bird's nest to take, to compare to a real live one. There we go. I want to see how you made your bird's nest. So go on and share some pictures with the hashtag QBG at home. I'll see you in a bit. Okay, welcome back to uh, Animal Architecture. Now we took a look at some bird's nests and we even created our own model. Now here's what I'd like you to do next. Not all creatures find stuff in nature and just, you know, put it together. Some creatures, some animals, make their own materials. In some cases, for example, Wasps will chew up bark and create this paper that they encase their whole nest in. And inside, they'll make these combs which they raise their young in. Other animals, like for example, a praying mantis, will make a foam on a stick that they whip up and lay eggs inside. And so this is a praying mantis egg case. Here's a picture of praying mantis. All right. Um, so they will uh, make a foam that hardens in place to protect their uh, eggs. Some other animals will do things like spin a web around um, themselves that will harden and make a cocoon and they'll use these leaves to camouflage them. This is a cocoon of a polythemus moth. Here's a picture of what that looks like. All right. So today I'd like to work with you on a model of a spider web which is another animal structure that an animal makes in order to, instead of sheltering and protecting young, to catch its food, all right? So let's take a look at what we're going to need for that. You are going to need a twig, maybe one that has this Y shape, and any kind of twine, yarn, or string. And what you're going to do is, quite simple. I'm going to start with maybe this one right here. You're going to tie one end right here. And then you can wind it all around. Ta-da! Now, I know this doesn't look exactly like a picture-perfect spiderweb, but guess what? Many spiderwebs don't look like that either. 
let's take a look and see if our spider web works. Now, it doesn't have any sticky parts, but it does have a lot of blocking ability. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to make some flies to put in our spider web. Let's fluff it up. And here we go. We have our pretend fly. Let's see if I catch it. Oh, I got it. Okay, welcome back. So, so far we've been talking about animal architects, animals that create all sorts of structures in order to be able to either catch food, protect themselves or their young. And last but not least, what I'd like to do is talk to you a little bit about the fact that sometimes when we find an animal that we like or we think could be useful or helpful for our environment, we humans make uh, homes for them or we make environments that are welcoming. For example, the Queen's Botanical Garden is a welcoming environment that was made by people and now lots of animals come and live there. Now I want to talk a little bit more specifically about structures. You're probably familiar with things like birdhouses. That's one example that you can use. Now take a look at these few other examples. Sometimes when there are animals that we really want to have near us, like honeybees, we will have homes built for them, like these beehives in our bee garden. Sometimes we build homes for animals that we find helpful, like this bat house, for example. All right, welcome back. Now you looked at a couple of examples of uh, animals that live in our heart garden that we built shelters for, our beehives, for example, and the bat house. Now, beehives are kind of like a farm-managed animal, so of course they need uh, shelters in that way. They're similar to our chickens. Look. We build the homes for our pets. Other animals, for example, uh, those bats, they're not pets, they're not a farm animal, so we just build a shelter for them that they can use. For insects, sometimes we'll hang something like this. Now, this is a uh, commercially made solitary beehive. It's nice to have uh, bees other than just honeybees around because that makes everything a little more diverse. They go to a lot more different kinds of flowers, but they do need these kinds of um, uh, shelters. Now, in my house, I don't have bamboo and wicker or anything like that, so we're going to make our very own solitary bee shelter out of the things that are available in our house. So here are the materials that you're going to need to prepare to make your very own solitary beehive. You're going to need some pieces of paper cut into small rectangles. You're going to need a toilet paper tube. You're going to need some tape. I'm using blue masking tape and a pencil. Now that you have your materials ready, take your paper towel or toilet paper tube and use the tape to seal one end. All right. Now you're ready to roll the individual pieces of paper. Okay. <clears throat> Take your piece of paper, put a pencil inside it, and roll it around the uh, pencil. Take one piece of paper and seal it so it stays in the tube. Fold one end and put your tape over it.
Now that this is sealed, and you've made a few of your paper tubes, you can start putting them inside with the sealed and in. Looks like I got room for a few more. I'll be right back with you. Okay, let's take a look at what our next steps are. Take a piece of string and cut off as much as you need. Okay. You can make a loop on one end. Let's see. There we go. Put it around your paper towel too. And ta-da! You are ready to set a home for solitary bees outside your window. Good luck!